Tom Wigley is at the National Center for Atmospheric Research. He has published theories about geoengineering as a strategy to combat global warming. The particular type of geoengineering that I've considered in some detail is putting soft oxide into the stratosphere. If there's a big explosive volcanic eruption like the eruption in 1991 of Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines, soft oxide is injected into the stratosphere, aerosols form, and there is a measurable and fairly well understood cooling effect. The sulfur dioxide from volcanoes has a beneficial effect on climate. It can reflect solar rays, cool the Earth's atmosphere, and offset global warming. Scientists like Tom Wigley see a lesson in this. We could fly airplanes in the upper atmosphere, in the stratosphere, and have big tanks of uh, sulfur dioxide that we injected into the stratosphere as the planes flew around. Is it conceivable that aircraft fuel might contain secret additives to make weather modification and geoengineering a reality? In an attempt to resolve the differences in this case, believers and skeptics will go head-to-head -head on the controversial subject of chemical contrails. There's been an explosion in commercial air traffic over the last decade. There are regions in the United States where there are so many jets, where the, the jet traffic is so high that in fact you can get substantial amounts of contrail clouds that blend together. This is something very, very different. Some people believe that contrails can be transformed into chemtrails. When jet fuel is combined with chemical additives, they claim that airborne experiments to control the weather and slow down or reverse global warming have begun. They say that the sheer number and persistence of contrails in the sky is visible proof. Others disagree. There's no evidence for supporting that assertion. Who's right and who's wrong? Or is the truth somewhere in between? I designed this poster um, as a jet contrail index to show the different types of contrails that people are seeing in the skies. And these different types of persistent contrails, I have questions about why these formations, why different dispersion rates, why do we have X's, why do we have long parallels with wisps coming up, these persisting parallels, we have knots on a rope, what's actually going on? Best evidence took California environmental activist Rosalind Peterson's photos to NASA cloud expert Patrick Minnis for his opinion on the jet contrail patterns Peterson finds so incriminating. These are some very imaginative names and very, very interesting. Why do they come in a long line from the jet and then go to a burst? What this shows here is a picture of a contrail or that um, appears to go into a cirrocumulus cloud. I doubt if either one of this has anything to do with this one. This may be at a different altitude. Looking at the same visual evidence, Patrick Minnis sees contrails and clouds where Rosalind Peterson sees chemtrails. We have skies that show one type at the same time as another type, and we get vibrant spectrums, for example, that look like this. This is one. A halo feature that you often see with the ice crystals. There's just an infinite variety of things, as these pictures are witness. Um, just it all depends on how the plane's flying through, the condition of the engines, whether there's any turbulence. The atmosphere is a fluid, just like the ocean. It's full of waves. So there's uh, an explanation for, for all of these uh, patterns that you see. I think that one of the reasons that you have the jets doing what they're doing is so that they can see their experiments in space. The satellites can see them from above or below. They can see which way wind moves. They can see dispersion levels. They can see the impacts. Dr. Wayne Evans has observed contrails using satellites and analyzed their chemical composition with a land-based spectrometer. There's two spectra on here. One is a spectrum of the jet contrail which is blue and the other one is a clear sky a couple of degrees off the contrail. So we've done that 
several occasions, and we detected a number of gases, nitrogen oxide, nitrogen dioxide, nitric acid, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and we saw methane. We haven't seen any evidence of strange chemicals being there. Whether clouds or contrails, their contribution to climate change is an acknowledged fact. But chemtrail believers go a step further. Well, jet fuel emissions leave particulates. The EPA and health officials all tell us that particulates are a pollutant and that they exacerbate asthma and other things. Those who believe in chemtrails keep a close eye on the health of those who live under these overhead activities. In incidences where doctors and nurses reported very high levels of emergency room admissions, two and three times above normal, in 122 cities, they said it's not the flu, they said we do not know what this is. Correspondents in those cities contacted me and reported, in their words, heavy chemtrail activity. We can go further and say that air traffic controllers in the United States have privately expressed their concern to us, the investigators, of public health problems because of this particulate matter falling down, which could very possibly be bringing down viruses, fungi, and bacteria that live and breed in the upper atmosphere. The advancing warm air in front of the cold front is, uh, is moist, the pressure's dropping, so you get allergies and all sorts of different things are occurring, and that's one reason I expect that, uh, that people are associating contrails with illness or bad feeling. Some industrial practices pollute the planet and cause global warming. But chemtrail believers also say that the evidence of higher than normal levels of aluminum and other metals in the atmosphere is a direct result of airborne experiments with climate change. The theory behind geoengineering is that scientists could put substances into the upper atmosphere that would reflect sunlight back into space, lowering surface temperatures to combat global warming. But has this concept already gone beyond theory? These ideas have been around for a long time and they range everything from firing artillery shells full of soil into the stratosphere to using synthetic chemicals uh, like aluminum oxide which if the particles were small enough they might float around in the atmosphere for a number of years and reflect sunlight and finally using gases uh, such as sulfur dioxide which reflects sunlight so in effect what you would achieve is putting millions of tiny mirrors in the atmosphere that would reflect sunlight the government of the United States and other governments are not going to admit to the chemtrail project. They would have to admit the dire gravity of the situation we are in. Now we are far down the road, it becomes harder and harder to admit that in fact this has been going on for years. Well, I think it's not true because the, the main tenant uh, that these people profess is that there is some increase in the amount of jet contrails in the atmosphere and therefore it's due to the expansion of these government uh, funded uh, uh, black projects. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that the increase in jet contrails can easily be attributed to one thing, increase in air travel. And uh, that there is some concern about the effect that may have on climate, but not because of some kind of a conspiracy involving uh, uh, government agencies.